in the center of our town, there's an old church, and it has an old tower clock in it. So it's an old manual clock movement from probably the early 1900s, 1920, 1905. I'm not sure exactly when, but looking up the clock maker, that's about the vintage of it. So this is the pendulum pivot. This hangs on the clock for adjustment. You can adjust it with a little screw. And then pendulum hangs on here. And the metal straps, the thin metal straps, are what the clock actually, the clock pendulum actually hangs from. Now, for some reason, they broke stress, whatever. Somebody bumped the pendulum, did something to it. Because there's a pretty good kink in that one. I don't know how that would have happened just from it hanging. But however it happened, they broke. So I'm going to try to get this fixed. I got new strapping material from McMaster Car. I got to get these rivets out and then get this, get the new strips put back in. So I'm going to try setting this on a piece of pine and then driving these down through and they should just go right into the pine. So my plan for getting the pins out. Let's see if they work. Hopefully they come out nicely. Oh, no problem. It's one pin. Two pins. I'll get that out later. You know, that should just pull right out, and it does. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So this is obviously... Isn't that cool? This is an old repair. See, it was an old tape measure that somebody cut. It's a good idea, actually. It's the right material, or similar. So... <laughs> Yeah, if I'd thought of that, I have a couple old tape measures I could have used, but I think the steel from McMaster Car will be better. So more bits of tape measure. And this appears to be the point of a, of a nail, probably a finished nail. So that's what they use for pins, was the finished nails. So, yeah, hopefully I can do better than that. I might, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet, but it doesn't need to be particularly strong. I suppose I could use finished nails again, but I'll at least do a little bit neater of a job than what they did. So I'm going to cut some strips of that metal and see if we can get it back together again. So there we go, the new straps are installed. I just need to drill holes for the pins and put in new pins. So here's my drilling setup. I got it held in the vise, and I can drill right through those holes and be all set to go. Well, I'm going to get my better drill bits. The bent Chinese M drill bit isn't cutting it for this. So drilling didn't work really well. Just dulled a bit. However, since the straps are so thin, I found that I can just punch through them with the punch. So, we'll give that a try. Let's see, this guy here. Yeah. So, let's try the... There, quick and easy. So, yeah, this strapping is springy. It's also slightly brittle, so I do this just even on the pine. punches right through. 
Doesn't make a very clean hole, but should be good enough. So now I just need to put some pins in and we're good to go. So here's the clock that I made the pendulum pivot for. This main clock body and the drive shaft that runs out to the window there. And here's the pivot that gets held up in there. There's a thing that screws on top and that big beast is the pendulum. So, and then there's a slot in the pendulum and a pin that sticks out of here and this runs the clockworks. So, I'm not sure exactly when this clock was made. I'm not really a clock expert. But the church was rebuilt in somewhere around 1930, 1931. So it's probably in that vintage, although I suppose they could have gotten a used clock for the church. So unfortunately, I don't actually have a, any footage of the clock altogether and working. The day I went to install the pendulum pivot, we were actually missing some of the other pieces to actually finally put it all together again and the day that that all got put back together again I wasn't there so the clock is up and running now in town and the pendulum pivots working but unfortunately I don't have good access up to the tower so anyways unfortunately don't get to see it working